Hong Kong, the last foothold of freedom on the vast mainland of China. Here in this city of anxious millions surrounded by the bamboo curtain and living on borrowed time, the fate of Asia hangs by a thread. My job here as an American news correspondent is to keep that picture clear. But no one can be a bystander in the battle of men's minds. And each day I find myself in the fight, along with my British friends who keep this lighthouse of liberty shining on a dark shore. My story often begins here. Headquarters of one of the most efficient and extraordinary police forces in the world. Mrs. Norman, any news? No, nothing. Nothing. My husband may be dead for all I know. Oh, I'm sure not. He's much too valuable to them alive. My guess is they're holding him until they can make a deal. What sort of deal? Well, should be some kind of a trade. I'll look into his wait and see. Well, I've waited for three long months, Mr. Evans. I don't think I'm ever going to see him again. Greetings, chum. Ready for our little daily workout? Yes, quite all set. And, uh, lock the door, will you, Glenn? Mm -hmm. Someone's always barging in. Like you. English cops. Scotty. Yeah? I wish I could help Mrs. Norman. I knew Wally Norman. We sweated out the Korean War together. Yes, I know, but he was a complete idiot. Trying to slip into red China without a permit from Pei Ping. Not to mention his defiance of your State Department regulations. You know, you American newspaper chaps give us nothing but trouble. And you should all have nurses to keep you in bounds. English nurses, I presume, Scotty? Perish the thought. Not for you, anyway. And not after what happened last night. <clears throat> oh, now, don't be jealous. She simply preferred a man with long pants. You made her feel like a den mother. Nonsense. She said I had rather attractive legs. Well, what's the difference between you and me, Scotty? I admired hers. Roll the film. There's a good boy. Hmm. What's this? It's yesterday's lot from San Francisco. By Honolulu, Tokyo, and Manila. Mm -hmm. Looking for anyone very special? No, not this time. Though one never knows with all your criminal friends from America. I say, let's give this one the treatment, shall we? She looks a bit special. What a smasher. And happily married, no doubt. The best ones usually are blasted. Let's see who she is. It's in line. Now, here we are. Hey, what luck. Miss Carol Pryor, American from New York. Professional buyer of women's clothes, staying at the Chatin Hotel. Well, heads or tails? You know, you won the last three times. Aren't you getting a bit weary? She's all yours, Scotty. I know this little girl only too well. She's not a professional buyer, she's a news reporter, one of the smartest in the business. Oh? Well, then why should she bother to conceal it? Oh, that's the way she operates. There are certain ethics in our trade, Scotty, believe it or not, and she violates all of them. Two years ago, I was working with her in Cuba. Before that, in Hungary during the outbreak. Both times, she played footsie with the other side. Bribed them to smuggle out her stories ahead of the other correspondents. Her nearly got herself shot. What, this charming girl? Well, she looks so utterly feminine. Doesn't she, though? I fell for it once until I got on to her little tricks. Now, what is she after in Hong Kong? What do you say, the Shatton Hotel? Yeah. What's she doing staying at a second-class hotel? Oh, don't be so ruddy suspicious. I dare say she's here on a very innocent holiday. Scotty, old chap, nothing is innocent with this thing. Wait, 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 hold, hold it there. You recognize him? 
Oh, yes, it's that uh, wealthy merchant fellow from Kowloon. Ah, Tong. He's also a communist, isn't he? Oh, yes, we think so. But he's never given us trouble. Why? What bothers you about it? Well, look at that. Those two seem very friendly to you, don't they? Not unduly so. Well, they probably met on the plane and she's merely being polite. Or perhaps he's trying to pick her up. A cat. be willing to make a trade. I figured as much. What do they want in exchange? Well, they haven't given their terms yet. But he'd be pretty stiff, no doubt. You're going to tell his wife he's alive? Who says he is? Thank you. Look, um, Len, don't mention this to anyone. I'll let you know. No. Okay? All right. Well, I've got a dirty chore on the Queen's Road. You <laughs> care if I lift that way? Uh, no, thanks. I've got to stop by the press club. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. Well, um, see you tomorrow at the cinema, then. Yeah. Perhaps we'll have better luck. You know, um, it's a pity about that American girl. She was, uh, precisely my type. Yeah, sly as a fox. So let's go. <laughs> When did you get to Hong Kong? <laughs> Yesterday. You know, I knew you were here. I was going to call you right away. You were, huh? <laughs> how did you know I was here? Uh, well, well, how could I know? I, I just came in here to buy cigarettes, and there you were. <laughs> I thought you were back in the States. <laughs> well, you are looking wonderful. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> That's not what you thought the last time. Well, you always kind of uh, got onto my skin one way or another. <clears throat> I read the series you wrote from Russia. It was great. Oh, thank you. Well, are you on your way home now? Yes, as a matter of fact, I just got here yesterday and I thought I'd spend a couple of days shopping. I hear the bargains are fantastic. Yes, they are, if you know where to buy. <laughs> and you always did. <laughs> mm. Well, it seems this is really the hot spot in Asia right now, doesn't it? Look, why don't we do your shopping and I'll uh, give you my guess. For free, too. Oh, Lynn, I wouldn't think of that. Listen, I know you have a lot of work to do. No, no, no. No, no, I already know the name of a shop. And you can just drop me off there and then I can see you later tonight. If you want to. I'm not going to be here tomorrow night. I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh, you're leaving tomorrow? Well, that settles it. If you're leaving tomorrow, we can spend the whole day together now. Come on, that's a good girl. I've got nothing to do. Uh, Glenn. Yeah? You forgot to buy a cigarette. <laughs> Cigarettes. Just a second. Uh, I do beg your pardon, but uh, aren't you Miss Carol Pryor? Yes. Uh, Jeffrey Scott, we met in New York a few years ago. We did? Yes, yes we did, at, at a cocktail party. I can't quite recall where, but there you were. <laughs> and I said to myself, uh, Jeff, old boy, I've got... A dirty chore in the Queen's Road? I'm terribly sorry, Carol, darling. I should have warned you about this. This is, um, this is one of the big hazards in Hong Kong. You see, because they own the place, these British bounders think it gives them the right to accost any attractive stranger. This one's notorious for it. Well, well don't stand there. Buzz off, you, uh, you colonial Casanova, before I report you to the police. Now, what was that shop you wanted to go to, my darling? Our towns. I say, don't you think you're going... Need a whole Hurry along, Yang. Be a dreadful mess if she caught us here. Sir, take a look at this. A letter from the Peking government. Put it back exactly as it was, and everything else as well, and get out fast. 
Yes, sir. Strong impression you've been here before. Hmm? No, no, no. First time. Far, isn't it? Yeah, it must have been. Does it look stunning on you? Well, thank you. Looks awfully good on her. How long does it take to make one like that? The dress. Oh, oh well, they usually whip it out overnight if you're in a big hurry. Well, I am. I think I'll go talk to the manager. Oh, good. I'll come with you. I wouldn't dream of taking you away from your dolls. That's not no, Susie. She's just an old friend who, who dropped into town. You know how these things are. Uh, sure. I know. Mr. Evans, there's a telephone call for you. You may take it at that desk over there. Oh, thank you. Hello? This is Glenn Evans. Um, about your friend. You were quite right. She's a very naughty girl. Look, it's, um, it's not wise to tell you more than this, but... Uh, we have another Norman case on our hands. Unless you can stop it quickly. Okay, don't worry. She won't leave my side. Yes, I, I know that. But do sleep lightly, will you? Ah, all set? Yes, all of the dress you like. Good. I made a reservation for dinner. A wonderful restaurant, especially these hot chow dal puppies. Wonderful. Hello, Chuck. Let me see the receipt they gave you. What receipt? They don't make clothes in Hong Kong without your payment advance. Now, I saw you pay. What did you pay for? I didn't pay him for anything. I'll tell you exactly what you paid for. You paid for passions across the border, didn't you? I did not. Our State Department refuses to let American correspondents into Red China. You know it. Now, you listen to me. Another one of us tried that three months ago, Walter Norman, and he's still there. They're holding him for propaganda purposes, and they'll do exactly the same to you. All right, now, when were you going? Tonight? Yes, tonight, Mr. Evans. And you will go with her.国际金管局 means the main one's directly ahead of us. Red China? What else? We wanted to go, isn't it? That's what you paid him for. I did not. I paid him for a good story. How was I to know it was going to be a trap? Okay, so they made it too easy for me. I'll argue with you, honey. You are a fool. Believe me, the trouble's just beginning. Well, what are they going to do with us? Exactly what they did to Walter Norman, I guess. They can't do that to us. We're not at war with them. Oh, don't kid yourself, Carol. These... Look, they've merely changed the weapons. Instead of guns, it's, it's hatred and lies now. They'll say we entered their country illegally. They'll hold us as spies and they won't give us any chance to prove we're not. They won't let us make any contact with Hong Kong or our people until they're good and ready to make terms. 
And you know something even more cute? Nobody will know what happened to us because we left no trace. You're quite right, Mr. Evans. You have made a great deal of trouble for us in Hong Kong with your reports to America all filled with lies. If the things I wrote about China were lies, then what do you call this? Just how are you going to deny this story when it's told? Will it ever be told? You paid in advance? Well, let's try again. All right. You admit they were both in the shop, but say they left around 6 p.m. Yes, Commissioner. And how long was that after Evans was called to the telephone? Not too long. Ten minutes, maybe? We had a patrol car outside your gates three minutes after I spoke to Evans. They saw no one leave. Where's our tongue? I do not know, sir. He did not come to the shop today. That's another lie. We found the rickshaw man who took him there this morning. Now, after we left your hotel, you went back to that room and removed something. Who told you to get it? No, sir. No. I'm not go back. I open the door and lock the door for you to go. But that's all I do. And you let someone else into the room. Huh? Good old the door. Long door. This one is lying also, sir. When I got there, not only the letter was gone, but the typewriter case as well. <laughs> I assume these three have been equally well coached. Yes, sir. They had nothing more to add. Yeah, of course. Take them all back to their cells. Maybe go for punch, Lilla. We shall get nowhere with that lot. Oh, they know what happened there right enough. But any one of them who talked will be signing his own death warrant. The others knew of it. Well, we could uh, deport them back to China. We at least have enough on them for that. Well, what could that do us? All the Americans, they must have the pair of them halfway to the border by now. And there's not a move we can make to stop them. Thousands of junks and sampans out there, we haven't the foggiest which one is theirs. Scoured the waterfront. No one saw them being taken aboard any craft. And once they're inside Red China, we should have lost them for good. Well, perhaps not the woman, but Evans for sure. It's got too much on them now. Well, they'll simply do him in and slip him over the side. Sir, this girl says she knows where they are taking them. Where? Hang up letter. To Yaipo, by boat. Do you know the boat? Its name, number? No. But I'm sure it's the junk of Keating. The hotel man. They've used it many times to take people to China. Get this boat's description from the registry. They'll alert the marine police. Yes, sir. Uh, why... Why have you told us this? Because he is my... friend. Mr. Evans. And I do not want him to die. How does he do it? Number is two two four and three one six. Cancel previous orders. Converge at top speed on vector four. Units three three one and three one two change course due north. Patrol units two and four to eight zero. Sweep vector five. Air Patrol, search Port Shelter Bay to the border. Air Patrol, search Port Shelter Bay to the border. Patrol units 204 and 280, sweep vector 5. All Marine units stand by. The 
suspect craft has been spotted in Vector 5. Repeat. All marine units stand by. The suspect craft has been spotted in Vector 5. Wait, What's he say? It's changing course. Gotta make a run for the nearest beach. I Come here. Now listen, that's time machine. North end of the Crown Colony, so we've still got a chance. If these guys don't get us first. Okay, now uh, we're close enough to make a swim for it. You go first. Go on. Nobody with your nerve could be afraid of sharks. Go on. My dress off. No, you keep it on. You might reach the beach and run into an Englishman. Oh. Be more careful about whom you pick up. He's a 
He's a dreadful chaser, you know. Announcing the arrival of unscheduled flight from P.P. Passengers now disembarking, gate one. Say gate, high time, Chicago, Yamaha, high time. Do you recognize him? Walter Norman? It's what they would have done to you. But what made them let him go? We're giving them something in trade. The Reds are most anxious for Mr. R. Tong's return, whom I might add. She's not too anxious to go. Excuse me. Again? Yes, my luck doesn't change. Yes, I'm afraid so. Well, I promise to behave myself if you ask me to stay. I like Hong Kong. It, it does things to me. Yes, I know, darling. That's why I've been asked to leave. You're not going to ask me to stay? Safeguard the city. Yep, quiet a girl. Well, anything very special on this one? If there is, it's my turn, you know. Sure, sir. corruption in the Orient. Stay tuned for Hong Kong, coming up next on TV 58.